We're constantly hearing this rhetoric that black men ain't ish, they're always cheating, they're these thieves, they're problematic, all this jazz. One way for me to change the narrative is to share the stories of those that I serve and I think it's so important for counselors to do the same. So this is just my creative way of addressing the issue, addressing the matter. Rest in power, Ahmaud Aubrey. Rest in power, Sean Reed. Rest in power to everybody with a hashtag before their name. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Legacy Speaks. I just really wanted to take the time to address something that has just been near and dear to my heart, especially with the recent deaths of Ahmaud Aubrey and Sean Reed. And the reason why this has just been weighing on my heart is because of the fact that one, I'm a black female and I am a black female who happens to be a black therapist for black men who have been dealing with a lot of generational trauma, institutionalization, as well as environmental trauma. And so this is just my opportunity to be able to advocate for the people that I serve on a consistent basis and just to give insight into cultural competency overall. But before we dive right in, I need you to hit that subscription button below. That way you can stay up to date on newly released content on a regular basis. So let's dive right in. <laughs> So before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, like I mentioned before, I just want to give you some context with regards to cultural competency. As counselors, we abide by the American Counseling Association's Code of Ethics. And as you look throughout the entire document, you will see the importance of cultural competency. We understand that the counseling field initially started off by focusing on white men and white men in particular who were either veterans or individuals who were looking for employment. But as the field grew, we began to incorporate women and all these other individuals of diverse cultures. Recognizing that the stuff that we deal with on a regular basis is of the human condition, but also understanding that the things that we deal with on a regular basis are culturally specific. And when we talk about counseling overall, I hate hearing counselors that say, oh, I don't see color. But that is a huge problem because one, if you don't see color, then you don't see your client. You're completely negating all of the other dynamics that are associated with the identity of your client. For example, when I first started off in my career, I began in partial hospitalization intensive outpatient, which is also known as PHP IOP. And the city of that particular facility was very rural. It was definitely probably about maybe like 30, 40 minutes away from the city of Atlanta. Just this completely different cultural experience. And so for me, understandably, we didn't relate on a lot of things, but I took the time to make sure that I educated myself on their experiences and vice versa. There will be times where they would ask questions that would just have me looking like, did you just but that's just my opportunity to be able to reframe it and to educate them on my experience. And so for those of you who are building therapeutic rapport or are trying to maintain and establish those relationships with their clients, put them in the expert seat. If you don't know anything about their culture, if you don't know anything about their experience, have them explain it. A lot of times they're just looking for somebody to ask them the right questions. So if you are struggling in that area of cultural competency, one, take the time to educate yourself, but also put your client in the expert seat so they can let them let you know how it usually goes from their experience, okay? Going back to the ACA Code of Ethics, not only is it our responsibility to educate ourselves, but it's also our responsibility to take the information that we have and make it culturally relevant. Like I mentioned before, this field started off with servicing individuals of Caucasian descent, of European descent. And so a lot of the research and a lot of the methodology, a lot of the interventions that were initially created were not created with us in mind. And when I say us, I mean people of color in mind. And as a matter of fact, a lot of research doesn't even really provide a sample or a large enough sample that surveys what we experience as a Latinx community, as black and brown community, the Indian community, the Asian population. A lot of the individuals that are either surveyed or are recruited for these research opportunities, they predominantly come from white America. And so 
just being mindful as a therapist, recognizing that we need to take these interventions and mold them and shape them and alter them, but, but not changing the foundation of it, but making sure that it's relevant to your client and their ethnic background. So really quickly, I wanna talk about my experience as a therapist of color. First of all, y'all know I am in the city of Atlanta, hot Atlanta, one of the blackest cities in the United States. It's also known as the Black Mecca, okay? A lot of individuals flock to Atlanta because of the world-renowned black excellence that just resides in the city. The reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I see that in the mental health space, we have a tendency to forget about the mental health of black men. And unfortunately, that proves to be a detriment to our communities, right? A lot of the issues that I tend to cover with those on my caseload include identity issues, institutionalization, a lot of environmental trauma, like I mentioned. And I know we say environmental trauma, but basically a lot of hood trauma, okay? Whether it's a criminal and addictive behavior or just being forced into a lifestyle that was not of their choosing, but you know, survival of the fittest kind of thing. Also touching on self-esteem and masculinity and challenging those gender role norms that have been literally pressed upon them since birth. Like I mentioned before, I love having the opportunity to give them that safe space Oftentimes, I'm dealing with my clients on a one hour basis. So I typically see them for about 50 minutes to an hour once a week. And they're still trying to get acclimated to dealing with these thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and what it's like to process, and what it's like to share openly about what they're feeling and what they experience. And what I do brings so much joy because every time I get an opportunity to help usher a person into their healing, or they get some new insight, some new revelation, or they just just have these profound breakthroughs I just ah, I just adore and I love it it makes me think about my father it makes me think about my brother and it just makes me think about all of the families that they're connected to when you help a person heal not only are they going through this beautiful wonderful journey but they take the same information that you teach them and they pass it on to their family members so you have men who are being reintroduced back into the home and they're teaching their kids to be emotionally healthy and then their kids teach their kids to be emotionally healthy and so on and so on and so if you look at a tree you have all these different branches all these different leaves and you get to see the power of just this mindset shift it's just a beautiful thing i also find joy in it because here's an opportunity to challenge the whole mindset that vulnerability is a weakness and that is a huge struggle for a lot of men. I know for me, there's some men who are literally bubbling at the seams and ready to just share their heart out. Whereas there's others who kind of need some coaxing or they need to be ushered into the process. It really truly is different for everybody. And so I just wanted to provide some insight for individuals who have a caseload or have clients who are black men or men of African descent. The ultimate goal is to remind them that their life matters and that they have a place in society regardless of what our government says, regardless of what the news says, regardless of what these crazy tabloids say, your life matters just as much as everybody else's matters. Your healing matters just as much as everybody else's matter. Another point to drive home is the fact that their role and their presence, not only in the home, but within our communities is so critical and so crucial, especially within this time. So if you are a black man watching this video and you are considering starting your wellness journey or just looking into counseling or therapy or whatever the case may be, I just want to remind you how amazing you are. You are appreciated, you are worthy, and most importantly, you are loved. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to take the time out to reaffirm my black and brown men out there who are looking to start their counseling journey or are currently on their healing journey right now. And then I definitely wanted to address counselors out there who are currently working with black and brown men right now. Please, please, please do your part by educating yourself with this particular population. Do your due diligence to invest in yourself. That way you are meeting the needs of your clients, okay? But I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Legacy Speaks. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And definitely stay connected via Legacy SPKS on everything. Until next time.
I know it took me some time to talk about this or just even address this on my platforms. One, it is a little bit difficult for me because of the population that I serve, but also recognizing that I have a younger brother and when I think about Ahmad Aubrey, I think about just the well-being of my brother. And, it, and I would not know what to do if something happened to Drew, like dead ass. I, I would literally be riding the F out for my brother, seriously. And even with the well-being of my father. And so this is just my way to be able to advocate for our black men out there, especially for those who are really trying to heal.